I'm feeling Christmassy today, so I want to draw a Christmassy teddy bear. I'm going to talk you through the process I use to draw this bear, and I'm going to particularly focus on all of the different textures made up in the drawing. Now to draw this, I'm using Pitt Pastel Pencils and I'm drawing it on Ingra paper. I have included in the description all of the materials I'll be using. Before we get started, if you want to watch the full real-time tutorial for this drawing, it is available on my Patreon. I have loads of different drawings and every one includes a in-depth tutorial along with the reference photos, swatches of all of the colours I'll be using and sketch outlines. Check out the link in the description. All right, let's get started with this little bear. So I want to begin by putting down some base layers of pastel. I'm not worrying at this point about building up any of the texture. This is literally just a case of putting something down. So I want to begin with the mid-tone color that I can see in each section, and it does vary from section to section. Most of the mid-tones on this bear is a orangey brown color, so I'm going to begin there. But there are some areas that are a lighter, more yellowish color. So you'll notice that I'm leaving some areas of paper blank. I want to try and build up these colours as smooth as possible, so I'm using little circular motions. I do also, though, want to get a reasonable amount of the pastel down, so I am using, I would say, a medium pressure. Now, as I mentioned, different areas of the bear have different mid-tone values, so I want to be using this slightly lighter yellowish brown to fill in the mid-tones on some other areas of the bear. I want to be bit by bit working my way around the bear until I can't see any of the paper left. There is the odd area that is much lighter, so for example on the left hand side of the bear's face. So I want to be building up here more like a light pink, I can see a little bit of pink in this section. And there is one section that I would say is more of just a white, so I want to be building up white in this area, although I do want to use the white quite minimally at this point. I also want to be adding the pink onto any other areas where I can see this colour, so I'm particularly looking at the nose of the bear, underneath a lot of the hair flicks that are within his nose, I can see a bit of pink here. So I'm just going to add some of that in. And then once I've got something over the whole of the bear's face, I want to gradually start working from the lightest colour to the darkest colour, just building up these colours a little bit more. So for example, I can start with quite a light yellow and add that in on all of the lighter areas of the bear's face. I can then move on to quite a dark red and start filling in some of the more shadowed areas or anywhere where I can see this red. There is quite a lot of red within the bear. And from there, I can start building in the deeper shadows with a series of browns. Now, it all looks a little bit peculiar at the moment, but don't worry about that. Right now, it's just about building up the colours that I can see within the reference photo and giving myself enough pencil on the paper to be able to blend. Now, from here, I'm going to go back to the colour that I used at the very beginning. And I just once again want to add in some more of this. A lot of it has been muted by the other colours. So I just want to brighten the whole thing up and also get some more pastel down on the paper. As I say, I do need a lot to be able to blend this. I'm just going to add a little bit of white on some of the lighter areas and also touch up a few of the browns. And then at this point, I want to start thinking about blending. Now, all I'm going to do here is use a Q-tip just to push this pastel into the paper. And it's also going to smooth everything out and give me a nice base layer to work with. What I want to do is start blending the lighter areas and then I can gradually work my way towards the darker areas. Now I wouldn't say that I'm pressing very hard with the cotton bud, I am just lightly pressing it on the paper. And generally speaking, I'm using circular motions to blend this. I want to end up with a completely smooth base layer. If I do blend a darker area and then I want to go on to blend a lighter area, I can just turn the cotton bud around so that I'm using a clean section of the cotton bud. And once I've blended all of this out, I have a very rough template of a bear's face. So from here, I want to do exactly the same thing with the body of the bear. I want to once again start with the midtones. So with this brownish orange, I also want to be using this more earthy yellow. 
And then from here, I can move on to some of the lighter colors. I'm actually gonna start on the body with the white because a lot of the feet have a very bright reflection on them, which does look pretty much white. And then I can move on through the light yellow color, adding in some of the less bright highlights. Then I can gradually work my way through the browns. I can use the darkest brown to add the shadow along the bottom of the bear. From here, before I blend, just like I did with the face, I can once again go back to these mid-tones and just build up a bit more on the body of the bear once again so I have a bit more pastel to blend. And then I can once again use a Q-tip, working in these little circular motions from the lightest colour to the darkest until I have a nice smooth body similar to what I have for the head. And it's at this point that I want to start thinking about building up some texture. Now this teddy bear is covered in some very short little hairs and I do want to create that illusion within the drawing. So what I'm going to do is use a lot of the colours that I used for the base layer and this time I'm working on the bear as a whole rather than working on the head and the body separately. So I'm going to start off with this orangey colour that I used at the very beginning once again and I'm just going to make these little flicks with the pencil all over the bear. Now there's a few things I want to be looking at. Firstly, I'm well aware that a lot of the fur is all the same length, it's all very short. So I want to be making very short flicks with the pencil. I also want to be looking at the direction of the hair on the bear. Now because this is a teddy bear, a lot of the hair is all going in the same direction. It's kind of starting from the nose and working its way towards the edges of the bear. On the body of the bear, it's going more like straight downwards. Now I don't want to forget, particularly with this colour, that around the edge of the bear at the moment, it's all very smooth where I blended it. I do want to add some little flicks, just very small flicks coming out from the edge of the bear so he looks a bit more textured around the edge as well. And it is literally a case of working all over the bear with this colour. Now it isn't making a huge difference at this point, but what I'm going to do is keep working through a lot of the colours that I already used, adding more of these flicks. So I can use the red, a number of these different browns. At this point, I'm not worrying about adding in any of the lighter colours. I'm literally focusing on building up the darker colours within the fur. And he is looking a little bit peculiar at this point, but it is all going to come together. Now what I want to do, once I've built up a reasonable amount of the hair texture with all of these dark colors, I want to start thinking about moving on to the white. And this is where I want to add in all of the highlights. So I'm going to begin with the white on the very top of the ear where there is quite a prominent shine. And I once again want to be making some flicks out from the ear with the white pencil because I don't want a really smooth line along the top of the ear here. And then I'm basically going to work from the left to the right. Now the left hand side of the bear does have a lot more light on him than the right. And I still want to be working in these little flicks with the pencil to continue building up this texture. Adding the white over the top of what I've already done isn't really making the areas look bright white. It's more lightening what's underneath here. And adding this in is lifting all of the fur. So it's really brightening up the whole bear and making him look much more realistic. Now I can use the white to go over some of the darker sections, even though it doesn't perfectly cover it. It does create the illusion of one piece of hair going over another. So for example, where I'm drawing around the bear's mouth, at the moment I just have a perfectly crisp line of the mouth, but I want to add some of this white just overlapping these lines so that it looks more like bear on top of slightly going over the mouth. So I'm going to keep working my way around the bear adding in flicks of white and I'm closely looking at my reference to see where I need to add this, where the light areas of the bear are. I will add a couple of flicks with that light yellow I was using earlier as well but I'm not using anywhere near as much as I have with the white. Now from here I'm happy with all of the texture of the bear. I want to focus on drawing his Santa hat. And I want to go about this in a very similar way to what I did for the body of the bear. So I want to begin by building up base layers. 
On the fluffy section of the white hat, I'm actually not going to use white for the base layers. I want to use two different cool greys. Now I'm using cool grey for this because I can see a lot of blue and purple within the fluff here. So using the cold grey is going to look much better with those colours. For the red section, I want to be using quite a bright red, a darker red. I've got a reddish brown that I can use for the darker sections. And I'm also going to use a pink to add in some of the lighter areas. I can use building up this base layer as just roughly marking out all of the different lights and darks that I can see within the hat. It doesn't need to be perfect at this point. Now I am going to avoid drawing the pom-pom on the end of the hat right now, simply because I want to use that section to lean on with my hand, but if I draw the pom-pom now, then it'll end up getting smudged. So I'm going to leave that until the very end. And once I've built up the base layer, I once again want to blend this with the cotton bud. Now the most important thing of blending the hat is I want to make sure that I don't get any of the red on the white section. So I'm going to blend the red section first, making sure I use a clean bit of the cotton bud where I'm blending the green section. And then I'm going to use a completely different Q-tip for blending the white section. And then I know that I won't end up getting any red in this area. From here, I want to begin focusing on adding some detail in the red part of the hat first. That's because the white section of the hat has the odd hair that's going over the top of the red section. So I need to draw the items in the back first. And I'm once again going to use these same colours. I am trying to be more precise now though. I'm really looking at my reference and trying to make sure that I do get things in the right place. Although that said, it is less important to get things perfect in the hat than it was in the bear. Because if the hat's a little bit out of proportion, it's not really going to make a huge difference. I do want to be building up a little bit of texture in the hat as well. So I can once again use some longer flicks of the pencil to just add a little bit of a kind of fluffy texture. But I don't want it to be too much. It's a very subtle amount that I want in this red section of the hat. So I'm going to build up the bright red, the dark red and a couple of browns in the hat. And then once I'm happy with that, I am going to add a little bit of white over the top, which is just going to brighten it up a bit. It's going to kind of look pink. But that's okay because I can add a bit more of the red over the top just to tone it down a tiny part. And then once I'm happy with the hat, I'm going to very lightly blend it with this blending tool. Now these are very good if you want to be precise with your blending. If you don't have something like this, then you could just use a cotton bud and be extremely careful that you don't over blend here. And from here, I can draw my attention to the white section of the hat. Now it's always worth remembering that white hair isn't actually white. And you'll remember that I haven't used any white at this point. So I want to begin with the light cool gray again. And all I'm doing here is using this pencil to add some little flicks of the pencil around the edge of this section. Cause at the moment, just like with the bear, it's all perfectly smooth. And then I want to move on to the darkest gray. And I'm once again adding flicks with the pencil. These are much longer flicks than the flicks I was adding to the bear himself because I do want it to be longer hair. I do still want to be particularly looking at the direction of these hairs and trying to follow those where possible. I would say I'm doing this relatively lightly. I'm not applying too much pressure. From there, I want to be looking at this section and seeing if there's any other colors that I want to add. So I am going to add a little bit of a bluish green and I also want to add some purple and that's just going to brighten the section up and give it a bit more depth. From there I am also going to add quite a dark kind of grey, it's the dark sepia and I just want to be marking in any very prominent shadows in this area. Now don't worry this isn't going to make the hair stop looking white, we do want to make sure that we still get a decent amount of depth in here even though it's a white section of fur. Now at this point, I'm happy with my base layers. What I want to be doing is brightening everything up. So I am going to use the white pencil now. And what I want to be doing is still adding these little flicking motions, but I want to be pressing quite hard over the top so that the white shows through. 
And what this is doing is it's adding highlights over the top so it looks like what I've already added is the shadows. It also helps these white strands of hair really stand out. And I'm just going to work over the whole of this section in exactly the same way, still looking at the direction of the hairs and just building it up until it's at a point that I'm happy with. And as you can see, this has led to what looks like a fluffy white section. Now the last thing I want to do is fill in the pom-pom. So I once again want to start off by building up base layers. I'm going to start with a base layer of the light cool grey, add in the shadows with the darker cool grey, and then I can build up blue, purple and pink on here again. Now the pink is created on the left hand edge of the pom-pom, which is a reflection from the red hat. And then once I'm happy with my general base layers, I want to blend this once again in the same way that I have throughout. And then I'm once again going to build up these same colours over the top. Now the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of texture to this pom-pom. So I'm once again going to use the white pencil and I want this pom-pom to look like it's got much shorter hair on it. So I want to be making very small little flicks of the pencil, similar to what I did on the bear himself, but this time I'm making them slightly curved, just because it follows the shape of the ball. All right, and that's it. Don't forget, if you want to watch the full real-time tutorial, it is available on my Patreon. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing guys and I'll see you in the next one.